stop me if you've heard this one before. There's a fighting game, and it has a roster comprised of a serious, disciplined, male Eastern Asian martial artist, a cocky blonde white man, an Eastern Asian coated woman in revealing or tight clothing, a white woman with ties to the military, a black man focused on boxing, a ninja, and a big bad guy. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Well, that might be because that grouping could be used to describe King of Fighters, Street Fighter, Virtua Fighter, Soul Calibur, Killer Instinct, Dead or Alive, Mortal Kombat, and Tekken. And I'm sure there's others that I forgot. I could get into why this might be. Maybe fighting games all take cues from each other, maybe they're all inspired by exploitation movies, but there's an undeniable set of recurring characters. Another common recurring character? The Native American Warrior. Seahawk, Chief Thunder, Nightwolf, Rick Stroud, Wolfhawkfield, Blackhawk, Condorheads, Nahova, Eagle, Pakawa, and that's not even including NPCs and adoptees. In almost every successful fighting game, there's a Native American character, and it's not great. Now, as you know that I advocate for representation, you might think that I would be glad that all of these independent companies chose to represent indigenous New Worlders. But the characters in these games are so stereotypical, so generic, and so culturally confused that I think we'd be better off without them. What do I mean? Well, while I could go through any one of these characters explaining how they rely on stereotypes and are a hodgepodge of different cultures, in interest of saving time, I'll look at Mortal Kombat's Nightwolf. Nightwolf was recently released as a playable character in Mortal Kombat 11, so I think his current surge in popularity will help me make my point more clearly. Nightwolf was first released to the public in a promotional interview with Midway Games in a 1995 issue of Video Games, the ultimate gaming magazine. At this point in development of Mortal Kombat 3, he was known simply as Indian, meaning that his character was built from the ground up in regards to his race. Still, in this interview, Mortal Kombat co-creator Ed Boon claims that the Indian, and that is all that he will be called, is non-traditional, a step above T-Hawk and Chief Thunder. He's modern, and he has a cool costume, and he doesn't use an axe. He avoids all of the stereotypes you would expect. Well, less than a month after the publication of that interview, Mortal Kombat 3 was released, and consumers got to meet Nightwolf. Okay, Nightwolf, that's a, a little bit cliche, but I suppose that it could be a last name. So what's his first name? Oh, nothing? Well, then is it a translation? No? Okay. My research has also indicated that Nightwolf was not given a tribe until the 2011 reboot, so Nightwolf's culture was structured around the white American idea of Native Americans, namely a monolithic entity with whatever the creators could think sounded native. He's shirtless, he's got war paint, he, unlike Boone said, does wield a tomahawk, he has a headband with feathers in it, he has fringe on his boots, and though he's mercifully not in red face, he's still played by a white guy. Later on, it would be retconned that he was Lakota, which admittedly would fit the closest to his design, especially his face paint, resembling Teton-style face paint, and his headband. In that case, though, the use of eagle feathers would be religiously significant, and by virtue of Nightwolf falling on the ground, they are disrespected. His attacks include magic spiritual tomahawks, magic spiritual bow and arrows, and a combo that literally includes the tomahawk chop move that white sports fans from teams named after Native Americans use to celebrate. Not quite the anti-stereotype that Boone described. Story-wise, he's a historian, which isn't the most stereotypical occupation. He uses shamanic magic, okay, that's stereotypical, and he aids the Earthrealmers in their fight against Shao Kahn. Some of this could be worse, a lot of it could be better. Story in Mortal Kombat 3 was Threadbare, and in his arcade ending, it's revealed that had he canonically won, his, quote, Native American people, end quote, once again real specific there, guys, would become the leaders of the Earth. Nightwolf's next playable appearance was in Mortal Kombat Deception in 2004. While he did appear in both Mortal Kombat Annihilation and Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm in much less stereotypical roles, mind you, those weren't part of the same universe and weren't worked on by the same people. Deception retcons Nightwolf into being solely a shaman, complete with visions and dreams, and a vague connection to the supernatural. Mind you, this was 11 years after the Lakota declared war against the exploitation of Lakota spirituality, leaving any portrayal of shaman Nightwolf questionable at best, and an act of aggression at worst. Sensing the game's antagonist, Onaga, he decides to become a Sin Eater, ultimately sacrificing himself in the game's canon ending to save mankind, as he was lost in the Netherrealm. 
So sin eating is not something that indigenous people of the Americas do. In fact, the practice of sin eating by humans started in Western Europe, but it sounds exotic enough, so Midway used it as a trait for their native character. Also, upon successfully eating enough sins, he wears a crude parody of Kanyankahaka hair and paint. You know I'm not going to let one against my ancestors slide. So, the Haudenosaunee have been demonized, in a more specific and relentless way, in American media, even before the Revolutionary War. Alongside the Algonquin, being the first people that were encountered by Europeans on this continent, the Haudenosaunee have been consistently dehumanized and othered. So, when a character absorbs sin and begins to appear Mohawk, I doubt that there is any real intention of providing positive representation. Lastly, he uses Vale Tudo, which is a Brazilian martial art, because why not? He appeared again in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, design unchanged, but back from the nether realm. He was guided by his spirit guides, a pack of wolves. Okay, it feels like a broken record at this point, but spirit guides are not a tradition of indigenous religions. Again, it's a western concept, referred to mostly by black and white American spiritualists. These guides, which will recur throughout the series after this, actually more closely resemble totems, an Ojibwe concept, but make no mistake, this is still a corruption of that. Nightwolf is led to Liu Kang and sacrifices himself to save his friend. Again. The reboot happened, and Nightwolf was reinvented as Lakota, and while this does mean he's not vague Native American anymore, like I said, the portrayal of his spirituality is quite disrespectful, even if it was accurate, which... It most certainly was not. See, he refers to Raiden as Heyoka, which sounds like a writing choice of somebody that had only browsed the Heyoka Wikipedia page, saw the word thunder, and called it a day. See, a uh, Heyoka is a sacred clown, a Lakota medicine person that is a contrarian. Famous for doing things backwards, they also provide outlets for healing and guidance, especially to abused women. This is an important role in Lakota communities. Even if, somehow, Raiden, a being from Shinto mythology, was able to be Heyoka, his actions and treatment of others are a complete misrepresentation of this position. No surprise here, but this Nightwolf sacrifices himself to save humanity. Lastly, earlier this year, like I said, Nightwolf was added as a DLC character in Mortal Kombat 11, now being a member of the fictional Matoka tribe, who are still a plains tribe that speaks Lakota. I have mixed feelings on that, but I only have negative feelings on the story they give him. First of all, it is revealed that Nightwolf is a title. That's not too bad, so what is this Nightwolf's real name? Grey Cloud. Great. Furthermore, he is transformed into Nightwolf by the Great Spirit. Ignoring that Wakan Tanka is still revered as sacred today, with many believing that it encompasses a pantheon and should be translated as the Great Mystery, the game says that the Great Spirit was killed by the game's antagonist. Look, I'm not saying that a game needs to say that a religion is real, or even that it's possible, but this is extremely tasteless. Add in Nightwolf's new spirit animals, his scalping brutality, his move called native violence, his continued reference to Raiden as Heyoka, and this game really did not try hard to avoid stereotypes. Compare this to Thunder in the Killer Instinct remake. Not the original, mind you. That was even worse than Nightwolf. But the reboot. The developers consulted the Nez Perce tribe to make the most accurate, most sensitive, and most respectful character that they could. And he still turned out extremely awesome. You don't have to compromise style for respect, and when representation of native people is as low as it is, keeping away from stereotypes is a great and easy way to both educate the ignorant and support the oppressed. This isn't even touching upon how often native people in video games are portrayed as stoic, serious warriors, virtuous but humorless, and almost alien. That's far from an accurate sampling of humanity if every indigenous character is stone-faced and grumpy. So, while definitely Thunder and Raton Haketon from Assassin's Creed are better than others, don't let a stereotype of character be pervasive either. Instead, meet with people. Learn about culture, mature, and collaborate with those that you plan to represent, and you'll be a positive force for good. Thanks for watching. Before I end the video, I'd like to plug a donation page. Avery, an amazing author, analyst, commentator, and friend of the channel, needs an electric bike to be able to get to work. Freedom of mobility is important in America, and if you enjoy meta-analysis, good writing, both fictional and non-fictional, and wise insights, if you can, she's definitely someone worth supporting. I'll link to her donation pages below. Thanks again.